you can take a jelly roll. Let's see, let's fold this up a little bit. A jelly roll is a two and a half inch wide strip, so we want to cut it either inch and a half wide or two inches wide. So next, let me just sit down, set down some four inch squares that I had from another project. Another their set of four inch squares from another project. And maybe another piece off of a jelly roll. And another piece from a jelly roll. Another piece on top of that. Another jelly roll. And maybe one more piece on that, a four inch square. So my first slice, I'm choosing inch and a half. We'll set the inch and a half aside. Whoops, we didn't get that quite cut enough. There we go. <laughs> it's going to defy me. Looks like we need to change blades. Or maybe opt for just a little shorter stack. That's probably best. Just rearranging the stack just a little bit. This is going to be a short piece. Let's just um, go for this. Go for a two inch strip. I think I may have gotten it just a little bit too thick. We're going to peel off those extra pieces to reveal the one inch strip or inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half. This one's a little bit shy. I'm going to try that stack again. Inch and a half. Okay, inch and a half. Two inch strips. Inch and a half strips. There's a piece left over. Why don't we cut that into a two inch strip? There we go. Inch and a half. Inch and a half. You can discard this or you can throw it into your pile and do a skinny strip in your crumb quilt. Let me try that one more time. There we go. That's a two and a half inch strip, a leftover from a jelly roll. Here's the piece I was working on for a quilt. Quilt is done. I'm going to set that right on top of that one. So you can cut several sizes at a time. And our last piece, let's put a four inch strip, a four inch square rather, on top of that. I'm going to cut inch and a half. That's what I'm looking for, inch and a half. And you may have some leftovers. You can put them in your pile for your for your quilt, for your crumb quilt, but I'd suggest that you stick with inch and a half and two inch pieces. That's what my tutorial is going to be about today. Just using two inch strips and inch and a half strips. Again, a jelly roll strip, two and a half inches wide. I'm going to lay a four inch strip, four inch square, and here's a piece from another project. Lay that on top and scoot this one down a little bit. 
I think we can get through that. I'm going to cut a two inch strip from all that in that stack. Oops! Keep your fingers on it. Keep your fingers right on that ruler. There we go. That's going to be a discard. This can be saved. There's your scrap from that cut. So you have this two inch piece, these two two inch pieces, there's two there. We cut through a lot of layers. And we cut that jelly strip down to two inches wide. That's going to go in your pile. So let's look at the pile at this point. You got a nice pile. And that was just a few minutes of cutting. And boy, that's going to make some fun crumb quilt blocks. Now, let's build the ladders. We're just going to sew pieces of, uh, slices of fabric together to make rungs of a ladder. Well, it looks like a ladder. I'm cutting some of these longer strips into about eight, eight to ten inch strips. That's all you really need. Okay, let's put those pieces together. I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. This is great sewing practice for your granddaughters or your daughters that are learning how to sew. It's easy, it's just straight sewing. And we're going to press these open. I'll do that with my fingertips for the time being. Let's take another strip of fabric. This one is also um, two inches. Let's put it on the green side because red and green. Green is the complement of red on the color wheel and I like to use the assistance of a color wheel to help guide me in selection. Cut off the excess fabric to get it out of your way. We're making rungs on a ladder. Let's take another strip. By the way, if you have fabric that you absolutely don't want to use, you wonder why you bought it, it's better when served up in small pieces. That's why this crumb quilt block really works well for getting rid of ugly fabric. This is not meticulous sewing. All you have to do is try to attempt to have a straight line. I'm going to get rid of the extra by turning the cloth over, getting rid of that extra kind of finger pressing it down. Next I'm going to add some blue. And I'm just going to, let's see, maybe divide that in half. And maybe in half again. Yeah, there we go. Now we have a nice piece to add. So when you're cutting up your 42 inch strips of fabric that you've cut to two inches wide, an inch and a half wide, you'll want to cut them about four times. Cut them in half and then cut them one more time in half. By the way, 
I'm using half-wound bobbins that I've had sitting in drawers for ages. The beauty of that is you get rid of the half-wound bobbins, even the old ones. And uh, by doing that, you free up having lots of bobbins. When I started my cr uh, crumb quilt, I had like one bobbin left. And so I started using the half-wound bobbins. And 300 blocks later, I'd rescued 80 of these bobbins. Isn't that wild? I needed that. I was about ready to go out and buy more. Didn't need to do that. Here's an inch and a half strip. It's kind of bold, brightly colored. Just going to add that right on there. Great. I'm going to get rid of the extra fabric off to the side here and open that up. See, now it looks like a, a ladder, and these are the steps of the ladder. Let's press that and then let's subcut it into guess what? Inch and a half strips and two inch wide strips, and that is going to help us build the creme quilt. It reduces the size of the colorful pieces and makes a beautiful six inch block. Here's what I'm aiming for. Let me show you how that's done. Let's go cut this. Now we're ready to take this ladder and subdivide it into inch and a half wide strips and two inch strips that are well, they're two inches wide, and those are going to be called chutes. So we're reducing the ladder into chutes. Do you remember the game that we used to play as kids called chutes and ladders? Well, this is the way I remember how to make this crumb quilt. We're building a ladder, and now we're dividing it into two-inch wide strips to make a chute. There's one chute. Maybe the next one I'll cut into inch and a half. Put that back together. And maybe, well that's maybe another inch and a half strip. I like inch and a half. This one isn't very wide, but you could trim it down one more time to make about one inch wide. But I have a friend who makes rugs, and he loves these little bits. They add a lot of color to his rugs. So those are our chutes made from a ladder. Let's go to the sewing machine and continue making the six inch square crumb quilt block. We're back at the sewing machine, and I have in my hands here the chutes that we made. I'm going to set them down here so I can keep my eye on them, and I'll be using them to build the quilt block. I think I'd like to take maybe about an 8 inch strip of fabric. And let's begin by dividing this up just a little bit more because if you have at least eight inches that you're overbuilding the size of the six inch square block to maybe eight inches, eight inches is a good figure to start with. So let's do that. My fumble fingers this morning. I'll pair these together and sew. I 
I was telling you the beauty of using half-wound bobbins, spare bobbins that you have sitting around in drawers and um, you're not utilizing them. Um, so the best part of, about using already pre-round bobbins that you have sitting around, half-wound, from other project is, oh my gosh, you don't have to stop and wind a bobbin. You just pull another one out of the drawer and, and go for it. So here's the full strip, cut inch and a half. I'm going to divide it in half. And once you divide it in half, you have at least eight inches to work with, and that's what I'm interested in, eight inches. And so we have the chute on this side, we have a plain strip on this side, and on the other side, we're going to add well, let's put it on this side. I like this best. going to cut off the excess and here's how we're building our crumb block utilizing the bits and pieces we have from other projects see I've been cutting lots of strips and making lots of uh, shoots also in the process these are all shoots so we're ready for another shoot Let's just grab one of these and we'll put it on this side here. And every once in a while you want to have your iron by your side so you can press that flat and continue to add. I don't mind getting up and walking across to make an extra cut or to press something. It allows me to refocus my eyes to be honest with you and to stretch my legs just a little bit. So there we are all pressed out. And now I'd like to add another strip to it. I was looking as I approached uh, as I approached my desk here, and guess what? I found a strip of fabric on the floor. I'm going to get it and use it. This is an inch and a half strip. And let's just go ahead, since that's a shoot, why don't we just use this plain piece? of inch and a half wide fabric. And we're moving towards um, a size where we could almost cut a six inch square. We just have to keep adding a little bit more. And every other one can be a shoot, but every other one can also just be a plain piece of fabric. It's up to you.
in opening that up, I think I have six inches of fabric. But just for fun, let's add just one more in case we have to uh, stop and come back to the machine. Here's some Christmas fabric left over. It's kind of, I wouldn't call it Christmas. Maybe it's just fall because it's got leaves and acorns, but it really is kind of ugly. I'm sure you've seen other ways, other methods of producing crumb quilts that uh, ask for uh, ask you to do production sewing. This technique is geared for the beginning sewist. So let me just cut that into a six inch square. Hold on. And there you are. There's my six inch square crumb quilt block. And here's the bit that was left over from making it six inch square. I'll save that and use that in the next crumb quilt block. Here are 40 blocks. Each of these piles are 10 blocks. And I would say in an afternoon you could probably do those 40 blocks. It takes 300 blocks to make a queen size quilt. And I'll be showing you pictures of the finished quilt. And also how to just simply sew these together four blocks at a time, kind of like a four patch, but I call them quad blocks. Thanks for taking a look at my technique. Mm -hmm.